Welcome back to the show. This is part two of my conversation with Wanji Press. If you didn't listen to part one, don't you worry. We just talked about how Wanji got his start here in America and how he moved from job to job until he finally found his perfect job to making pizza. In this episode, we talk about how he leveled up within the pizza organization he ultimately landed at and how he got his start in social media. But most importantly, we talk about how his life changed after becoming social media famous. Let's get into it. So you have these two jobs, you're working as a dishwasher, you're at CPK. How did you finally get into Posto? And when did you get involved with social media? While I was working at the California Pizza Kitchen, I found this other job through a friend that was working with me. He's like, hey, this is a new place in Somerville, Massachusetts, what Posto is, and they make pizzas. So he started working there and he's like, hey, we're looking for somebody to work at night. I was working mornings now only at California Pizza Kitchen. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I'm doing nothing at home. And, and so I went there and I see the oven and it's like, it's this huge oven, wood fire, like the oven at uh, California Pizza Kitchen is a brick oven, but it's all, uh, it's only gas. So you can control the flame, high, lower. Pizzas are like eight minute, 10 minutes to supposed to be cooked. So I went to this place and they were like, no, pizzas here take like 90 seconds to bake, to cook, to bake. And I was like, wow, this is so, <laughs> so crazy. So I said, have you know, had, you've never had pizza like that before no, until. Not at all. Bro, I've never seen it. Not even like, cause it, it was, it was not a social media that I remember. I know there's some places here in Boston, like North Bend, they, they use like wood. But no, not that I like personally seen or tried or like seen on Instagram or like Instagram wasn't like a big thing. I'm talking about 2010. So this is completely new to you, very novel, and you're amazed. No, absolutely. The owner, chef owner, so he went up in his own place and then, you know, he was like, hey, you stretch the doll like this and goes in the oven, you know, the basic. So I was like, oh, sure. I was excited. I worked two years in both restaurants making, I don't know how many pizzas a day. But now I was like very into pizza. I was like very in love with it. And eventually the place Posto was growing. It was new, but people started like going around and, and learning more about the restaurant. So we started getting busier and busier. And, and you know, the, the owner was training me pretty well, always giving me more like incentives to work. And like, they were very nice. And like, at some point I was like, I was more towards Posto because I started learning more about pizza, right? So I was like, this is fresh. This is just different, but you know, I was just like, maybe this is what I'm looking for. At some point, I was just exhausted. It was so much work and you know, I was making good money at Posto. They were giving me a lot of hours and, and you know, I was like, maybe I don't need to work this much now. And you know, I decided to just stop working at California Pixel Kitchen and take a little more time for me also, cause I was just only working. It's good, but it's not everything, right? Like I say, you, when you first, you think it's all about money and then eventually you're like, no, 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 this is not about money. This is about like, it's about balance, enjoying life, finding something that matches that lifestyle. Okay. Yes. Correct. That's the right word. It was probably 2012. So I was just working for a post store. Then the owner got a trailer for like doing mobile events. So I was just doing extra events and you know, it was just like, I was fine with one job. I started making videos at that point. It was like 20, 2013, I guess, 2012, 2013. And then I start posting there and then they go like, I don't know, 20 likes. Social media on Instagram at that point, it wasn't like now that everybody wants to become famous and like everybody wants to like have a lot of followers and then lost step. Purpose of that was like sharing what you were doing to get people to see it. That was my first motivation. I was just sending, posting this video so my mom or like people in Columbia can see it. Just that little, you know, like my family and friends. It wasn't like people from like all over the world like now. And I think in 2014, 2015, I just like create a personal profile. So I was like, I'm just going to do pizza here. I was just like excited about sharing. And then I started seeing like people from Boston, like, hey, I went to Boston and I didn't know that, you know, you worked there. And then I was so excited. So I was like, wow, this is so exciting. And it makes me think about this. I started working with some um, products company in the girl I met. She's like, hey, what? She was like so excited when she met me. It was probably 2016. And she's like, oh, I'm so excited to working with you. You not gonna believe this, but I'm gonna tell you this. When the first time I see you, I was in my honeymoon in Italy, and a guy from Italy, an Italian guy, showed me this beer and he's like, hey, he's from America. Look at these videos. And it was B. And she's like, this is so crazy. I didn't even know that you were here, but this guy already saw your videos. And I say, wow, that's so cool. So, you know, I 
start posting and then, you know, I got like a thousand followers and then 2000 followers, but I continue like making videos and like just posting whatever, whatever was on my phone. Not, nothing like now that you really create and then you know what people consume, the content that you're making. At that point, I was just posting random pictures of pizzas and like, you know, at some point I had like 3000 followers and, and I was thinking, I was like 3000 people. So I was like, oh. Yeah, 3,000 people, that, that's pretty exciting. And people at the restaurant were excited to them. Like, hey, 3,000 followers. And it brings people to the restaurant. So at that point, there were like people coming. I was like, oh yeah, I, you know, I seen these photos and, and I was like, oh, I'm pretty cool. So that's how like it start. So it's safe to say that the owner was pretty supportive of it. Yeah, no, no, no. Also at some point I was the one that I was like moving the, the page, the postal page. I was posting my photos. They were like, oh, whenever you want to post something, I was just posting, you know, a margarita pizza, whatever. They was being very nice and supportive. And, you know, it's like, I'm like using their business, their like product to, to make videos, but they also getting some like people that know the restaurant, like here in the country and international people, like people from like all over the world wants to come and try our pizza because they see, you know, online and they're like, oh, I have to go try it. And like in a typical week. What percentage of people do you think come because they say, I saw your video or I saw your post? There's weeks that you see people every day. And there's like Saturdays that you see like four people. It all depends. When there's like vacation, like this, like the Boston Marathon, they brought a lot of people to the restaurant. I think that a week we brought a solid like eight, 10 people. That same Saturday, we saw probably, I saw four tables for people for different like parties that came and they say hello to me and they're like, hey, we come here for the marathon and then like, the first thing we did was making a reservation for post. So even when I was in beta for the Pizza Expo, I posted online. I was like, hey, because because I know people travel, come see the restaurant and try the pizza. And I was like, hey, I'm not going to be here for a week. So just so you know, like, because so, sometimes people make plans so like, hey, we're going to be near Boston so we can just drive. And I don't want people to drive hours just for nothing, you know. They're going to have the pizza, but they also want to talk to you and they want to, you know, like see you and all the stuff. So I posted and we we'll still have people. I think a family came from Canada and they were like so happy, but the guys working, um, my sous chef and the other cooks, they were like showing them the restaurant, uh, showing them the oven. So they were like very excited too. So I keep telling them, you know, be proud of like, cause it's not only me, it's the restaurant. Cause I'm not, you know, I promote myself, but I, I'm always promoting the restaurant. It's like a hundred percent the restaurant and then I am always there. So it's like, it brings a lot of people. It's so funny cause some people get very excited. They're like, <laughs> they get very excited. They're like, oh my God. They I can't believe it. I was like, oh no, I'm just a regular guy. It's a, it's a good feeling. I like it. I'm sure it is. And I, I also, for those who are listening and don't know, you all are in Somerville, right? And it's not super, super close to like the city center. And so people are, when they get to Boston, they still have to drive maybe like 20, 20 minutes. Yeah. 10, 20 minutes. And there's people that like, the guy said, people was like, oh, we drove, we drove from like New Jersey, like five hours just to come here and try the pizza. Like, you know, and I get that because when you love something so much. You know, you do that kind of step. Like we win this industry and then I don't want to drive a New York City to try one of the kids that's there because, you know, you know, it's going to be worth it and, and once in a life experience. So I was like, I appreciate that so much because people say, hey, I seen people from California, Hawaii, New York City, like Maine, from all over, like even from people from Europe. This year I met a couple of people from Europe that they came here because somebody over there, send them the information that, hey, they heard that, oh, you're going to Boston? Yeah, you should check this place. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, that's, this is good because it's global. I was like, we call it a thing. It is. And I think the only reason why it's a thing is because you somehow managed to just grow this social media following. Picture this. A new family moves into your neighborhood. What does that mean for you? A potential new customer. What better way to introduce yourself than with free pizza? Here's how. Our Town America works with businesses like yours to craft irresistible welcome packages to anyone who moves into your neighborhood. If you listen to my podcast with Christina Martin of Melitza's Pizza, she uses this same tactic and oh my goodness, she is raking in the customers who naturally become diehard fans of her business. So if this is something you want to get started on, you got to get with Susan from Our Town America. Let her know you heard about her from What's Good Dough. That way you can save $125 if you get set up. I got you, fam. You can reach her at 480-678-1366. Again, that's Susan from Our Town America. 480-678-1366. Thanks for supporting our sponsors. When did you notice your social really taking off? Because the last 
we left that you were at around 3,000 followers. Yeah, it was like 3,000, you know, that was probably 2015 or something. And I was like, pretty good at that point. Like I say, I was posting, but I wasn't like very into like, into the social media. I was just posting and, and you know, when a video, uh, it, it didn't like actually go viral because it didn't like assist at the point. A few views, thousand views. And then by 2019, 18, 19, I went to like probably 5,000, 6,000. You double it more, 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 8,000, 9,000, I think it was around 8,000 when, um, when the pandemic was here, right? And then maybe 2020, I was like, you know, we were working, but we were working like a few hours. So I started making more like actually videos. We were like getting videos of like, oh, I was like making pizzas and like, you know, because we have free time. It's not like when you're like focused on the restaurant and like working so much. So I was like, it's posting. And it's so true that there were more people at home watching to their phones. Besides that, what I really feel that helped me or helped my page to grow was the fact that a lot of people started cooking at home and like, you know, getting excited about sourdough. Like, oh, we're going to make our pizza and then we're going to make our business because we can just go to work. And then, and then people, people probably look for like, who is like in the business and the, the industry, that's what I meant to say, like who's the thing in the industry. And then also I started making these beautiful pizzas taking photos because when summertime is here, the life is beautiful. So I was posting them and then pages like food 52 that has like 4 million view, uh, 4 million followers. And like all these pages start like sharing my, my, um, either start sharing my photos and then that brings a lot of people to your page so they can start seeing it. I have like 800 videos on my phone, all pizza, all me baking and all, uh, so I was like, I'm just going to. Because I was just taking videos, but no posting. Because like I say, I wasn't like taking this very serious. And then I started like seeing people like, hey, I just want to say thank you because of you. We're going to start making a little pizzas here. So we're going to sell it to our neighbors. And I was like, oh, humbled me a lot. And it filled my heart. And then I love to wear that. So I started like posting two photos, three videos a day. Start getting more views, more views, more views. And then it went to like 10,000. And then that 10,000 went to like 15, 20, 30. It was probably two years that it grew to like 100k, and then I got a um, BuzzFeed Tasty. They make like an actual video of like it was three minute video of me like this guy making wood fire pizza, and they had like 100 million people on their like feed. So they're like same with Facebook. All these big pages were like sharing my videos, and like you know they even do for permission all the stuff. And then I went to the Pizza Today magazine, all the podcast. So it helped you to like move around and then like meet more people. And then same, also the same people that was following me was sharing my videos and like, you know, I had like a thousand shares on a video, 2000 shares. So imagine how many people seen those videos. And, and to me, Instagram, it's not, it doesn't go like too viral, like Facebook does. Facebook is crazy. It's a different thing. Facebook is like, you posted a video and then it gets like 5 million views in two days. I feel that Facebook is more for me, profile. I take Instagram more professional. Facebook is a little more like posted video than then if they're going to like go viral, probably the same community, same amount of community, but Facebook gets more like people sharing videos and like you reach more internationally. Like if I see my, my, uh, my numbers on Instagram, my main, uh, following is from us, then Italy, which is pretty crazy. You know, I basics of Neapolitan style, we do the dough like the correct way, but maybe the way I bake it, maybe the way we put it in the tempics in the oven, maybe the toppings we use is a little different. And some people is not too happy about it. Not that I want to be mean, but it's like, I'm not working for you. So, cause sometimes, you know, sometimes I get a little upset. <laughs> you know, a lot of people will see this, but if I go to school, right. And then they tell me like, Hey, you had to stretch this like this. Yeah, man, I make a video and I stretch it the wrong way. you will be like, Hey, this is another way I teach you. Right. Sometimes people like feel very like attached to it. And they're like, they're like, Hey, you're not doing the right way. I'm just like, what is the right way? The fact that you're not doing the way you like it doesn't mean that it's wrong. You can't just do what people, what other people does, you know, it's like, it's like you, you can follow it, right? You can follow, but if you want to become somebody, you want to become your own style, whatever. It's like, you gotta go and do your own thing. It's like, no, just like follow, you know, I want to do it like you, you know, I start watching videos. Like I see how people stretch it. I'm like, no, that's pretty cool. But I do this way and, and I like it. And every time I post a video of me stretching, I always say like, this is the way I do. It's not the right way, the wrong way, but it's the way I do. If you want to like follow it, you're very welcome. But people on social media is like, you know, they're never going to be happy. So it's like, it's more good people than other people, but 
you always have to deal with it. You start like seeing that thing a little different. When I first started and I started seeing these comments and people messaging me like, hey, like you're a disgrace for all. It's like you're showing people the wrong way. And like, and I was like, I felt a little upset about it. But now I'm like, it is what it is. It's like open your own thing, open your page, make videos, teach people the right way that you think is right. And it's good. Just don't, don't unfollow. It's funny because some people follow me and then they send all these messages. I'm like, why well, you keep following me? <laughs> but you want to keep watching these wrong videos. But it's part of the social media thing. So it is. I think it helps drive engagement. I guess my question for you is like, you're working all day as a chef and you're posting, it seems like two to six times a day. And then you're dealing with a bunch of comments, some good, you're going to respond to those, some bad, it seems like you're responding to those too. How do you balance that lifestyle? That, it's a, that is a little complicated, having to pose and, and comment. And, and I always want to be engaged with the people. I try to reply it or I try to at least like it and make people know that they've been seen, right? And then you've seen their comment and then it shows appreciation, but it's hard because like, Sometimes we have to work, but you know, on my way there on the train and what I'm at home and try to like post it. I just go around and like see oh, which video I should post, which video like, you know, you have to like post in not the same videos all the time, but you know, like an example, I'm, I'm getting like 8,000 to 10,000 people a month, new followers. Like right now I'm getting like 2,000 people weekly, new followers. So there's 2,000 people that haven't seen a video that I post last year. Cause you, you're not going to have like new content all the time unless you're like a hundred percent into this, but I have to have a job, so I have to be working. So I try my best to make new content, and all, always, like, I try to post it. Even when I'm on vacation and stuff like that, if you want to keep your engagement up, and you want to keep people looking at your page, you sometimes people say, hey, how do you do to get so many followers and, like, views, and, and I'm like, how many times you post a day? It's like, oh, yo, I post, like, three times a week. I'm like, hmm, that's what it is. You can't just overwhelm people. You got to be careful. Don't just post 10 times a day and like, you just post in the postmark, you know, like post what people want to see. What I do, sometimes I post all my stretching videos, but I, you know, I continue the trend like today, tomorrow, but now that I, I post this and I post a baking video and you know, it's like, makes people confusing and it's just like, keep, keep going with the flow. Like you say, it has to be balanced, like not too much, but not too, too little because you can see your numbers. You know, sometimes I, I, I take like a week when you get a lot of followers. It's complicated because now you get like a hundred comments, 200 comments, 300 comments. Before when I had 20 comments, it's easy. You sit down and then you, you reply this 20 comments, but now you get in like a hundred and then I post three times and I don't have no notification on my phones because it's just too many. But, um, you know, I always try to go into the, the app and then try to look the old videos and see if I didn't reply to some videos and like, and always like the messages that something that is always there. People's always say, oh, can I have your, your uh, recipe? Can I have this? Can I have that? I don't reply many messages because they're almost the same, but you know, I appreciate when people send me a message like, Hey, Juan, you know, I follow you. I appreciate what you do. It's, it's exciting to see your videos. And I always look forward to like, what you're going to post next. But there's some people that just message you like, Hey, not even, they don't even say hi. They're like, don't recipe, please. <laughs> Very impersonal. Just say hi, you know, <laughs> then we can become friends. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever considered using, I don't know, like an automated chat function to relieve some of that off of you? Could be, but I feel that as long as I can, I want to be me. I want to be the one like trying to do this. And it's not only Instagram. I have TikTok and I have Facebook and both pages are growing like pretty well. So it's, it's a lot of comments, a lot of people. So it's a lot of time consuming. I try to do it on my free time. And my wife is always like, oh, the house on the phone. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to like a little work at home. Like working at home, but I had to because it's like at some point you become like somebody and you create a community, right? I'm about to get 500k now. Yeah, I have your numbers right here for the audience. It's around 200 plus for Instagram, 170 for TikTok, and 89 for Facebook. So, like I said, it's like it's people that follow you and want to see what you're doing, right? You have a community that wants to see what you're doing, and one of the best things that I learned or that I seen that I, you know, I've been traveling to different cities, Chicago, LA, Miami, and everywhere I go, there's someone that I know, you know, someone, let's go to my place. And then everywhere I go, it's a pizza place that want me to go there and eat their pizza. So it's like, so excited. I just want to push back a little bit because it seems like you have a busy life. And to me, I want to push back and not in any of those, but the fact that you are a personality and that you are famous 
in pizza, right? You're a pizza in, person in the, community, yeah. in the community. And so when are you going to be like, okay, it's already a lot. Maybe I should get somebody to help out with this. Do you have a plan for that? Attention all bakers. The Artisan Baking Center by Central Milling, yes, the amazing flour company, is doing a one-time deal for the month of June for all of my listeners. And I'm so, so happy to partner up with them. You too can get Tony Gimignani's class and Peter Reinhardt's class for 30% off. Trust me, you're gonna wanna take this on because it's not gonna last forever. This is actually the first time they're ever discounting these classes and I am so, so excited to bring this to my listeners. I've taken the classes myself and guess what? Whether you're a seasoned baker or you're just getting started, this is gonna be so beneficial to you. If you've ever bought any of their books, I'm talking about the Pizza Bible or one of Peter Reinhardt's books, this is gonna be so helpful to get that visual learning that you don't get from just reading. Once again, you're gonna to wanna to take advantage of this offer by June 30th. All you have to do is go to their website, Artisan Baking Center, and type in code GOODNO to get 30% off your classes. I appreciate you listening and using that code and supporting my show sponsors. This past couple months, I've been like actually thinking about it because it, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot, like she understands, she understands now, she knows that, but sometimes it's a, it's a little complicated. I was telling her that I went to the Pizza Expo, right? And Pizza Expo is, for us, it's where you meet everybody, right? Saying hi to everybody, trying to post videos of the Expo because people like to see it, but I was like, you know, it was so much for me. So maybe I feel that I want to grow a little bit more. So it's in the, it's in the plan in the future. Maybe you have somebody that can help me out a little bit with the, you know, with the comments, social media, like also I had a lot of emails about doing publicity and stuff like that, that I don't personally do it. Yeah. No, like an influencer type of uh, guy, but this is a good deal. Why not? Right. I'm very open for everything. You know, I'll check my email and then like, you know, try to help. Cause there's also business that not only they're going to pay you for something, but you know that you want to help them get more visibility. That's also good. It's not like it's not about the money they're going to pay you, but it's also like helping small business and things like that, you know. At some point, we'll definitely have to check this and then see who can help. And then maybe you are the right person, like you're seeing me and then you can help. Send me an email. I'll be sending you an email after this personally. <laughs> As we're talking about, you know, just the future, you're content with where you are right now. Maybe there's something in the future that you set your goal on, whether it's a, a follower number, but I guess what, what is next for you? So I want to continue. I don't have, it's a good problem, right? Cause I, I, I have a lot of stuff to do that I can do eventually. Maybe I can do consulting one day. That's one of the main things that I would like to. I already help people a little bit, but it will be nice if I can like actually myself helping people. I can just like get more focus on social media and then see where I can just go with this. And also like I work with the restaurant and I enjoy it and maybe we can find another location and like grow. It just step by step. I feel that you can't just get too excited because like at some point you need to become popular and then just like, oh, let's open a place. And then, yeah, but you need like a million dollars, right? The restaurant that I'm working for, it's like, you know, we always want to grow and like, it's a restaurant group, as they say, they have the restaurant. So it's like, it's always growing and like, it's exciting because like, I can even stay here and then just go and grow with them which I've been there for 13 years already. Every day I go is like the first day. It's just, it's just exciting. And I always take pictures and they're like, it's so exciting. It's like, wow. And when I see that always working profoundly, like, wow, it's so exciting. Like the first day, it's like, wow, I, I get so impressed. I have a cat, right? And I always pose my cat. And same thing happened with my pizza. I was like, I always get excited. I was like, oh, it's so good. I have, like I say, I have 800 videos and probably like 400 photos. And I always, every day take photos. And sometimes it's funny because people always, like think the same photo the videos, but no, it's because like we're very constant and pixel looks the same all the time. I still have a lot. Maybe I can go and do more social media and then, you know, maybe get more focus and get people that can help me grow in on this. Or maybe I can just do consulting. Maybe I can just open a restaurant, you know, eventually. Who knows, right? Stay with the company. It's a good thing. It's a good thing that you have a lot to do. For now, I just want to keep growing growing the community, helping as much people as I can and, and, you know, helping me myself too. So I love how excited you are about the dough. It's so very, oh, very so, nice so to hear. I, it, that's so the best thing about this podcast is seeing your excitement over it. Thank you for sharing that joy. As we wrap up, what are final two questions? What is one mistake in pizza business or life that people should avoid? I feel the biggest mistake is just trying to be like somebody else, you know, I'll try to do what 
somebody else is doing. Like I said, people ask me, hey, what's the recipe? What's the recipe? I can give you my recipe for the recipe of the restaurant. I have my own. The restaurant has an old. Everything will work. But you have to like first have the right oven, right flour, right everything. Then you have to know how you handle your dough. It's not like I can give you the exact recipe, but at the times, the temperatures, sometimes it's your hand, sometimes I have people making pizza that don't look like the ones I make because they're not going to look the same because we're not the same person. But you can follow. But I feel that sometimes people just try to be like somebody else, you know, like make what they do. You can be like inspired by somebody, but get the basics, right? And then put your own things in there, right? I feel that if you focus on on just, just be like somebody else, first of all, you lose your passion because you're not like, exciting like i am excited about like seeing my dough every day because you know like it's somebody else's product why are you gonna be excited about it you're not putting your heart on it it's like you have to like try 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 because like i said we've been in this for 13 years and and the first day the dough didn't work sometimes some of the people that make the dough in the mornings they had to leave they find another job so it happens to us we all know the big change right they all made the same right maybe they put some cheese on the staff grass but you'll be like hey i'm gonna go eat there but and you know it's it's the same as this other place, right? You should be yourself. You saw the knowledge that other people have. Like when you do consulting, right? You teach people. Eventually, they're going to start doing their own thing, right? Every time I go somewhere, right? And people are trying to teach me something, I always listen to them. I'm not going to be like, hey, no, no, I know this. I know how to do that. No. I always listen, see the way they do it. And if I feel that I can do it better, I do it. I do it my way, right? But I always listen, always listen. Because even though you know a lot, there's always somebody else that knows more than you. It's always helpful to, to like listen to like whoever is like trying to make it better, you know? I love that you praise your individuality, but I also praise that you understand the fact that everyone has something off to offer and teach you. What do you want to leave the audience with today, Juan? Thank you so much for your time and just being here. And I really no, appreciate it. No, no, thank it. you. It, it's exciting. I um, I love being able to share what people doesn't see sometimes because I'm not like always in camera talking. Like, you see me baking pizzas, but not like, uh, they actually video stalking. I, I don't talk to people when I'm working because we're busy. But people seeing what we do on a Saturday night always make people excited. And and then you get a lot you get a lot of followers from that because people share it. And the fact that because you can post photos, but people it could it could be fake, right? It could be fake. It couldn't be you. But when you show people that it's right, like you're making a live video, people are seeing you doing that. It's it's also helpful. I make live videos, and when people come to visit, I can say hi to them because sometimes when I'm at the expo. So many tickets, bags. We also do a lot of takeout business there, so it's like it's crazy. So I feel bad because some people's like, hey, you want? They want to take a picture. They want to talk to you, but I'm like so busy, and I feel bad because you know they're making an effort to go there and say hi, and then you you have to respect that, you know. At least take a minute and and just go say hi because you know they're gonna they're gonna remember that forever. Thank you, thank you very much for sh- sharing your love and f- your passion for pizza and for just being a real human being. I'm really impressed with what you're doing and. I'm really excited to see what comes. Oh, no, I no, thanks for having me and, and, and thanks to everybody that follows me. It's my pleasure to like make content for you. And, you know, and if you don't follow me, you can always check my Instagram, Facebook or TikTok. So it's one at 1G Pizza. It's like that 1G Pizza. And I'm very welcome to my, to my Pizza world. Beautiful. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. How's it going, Pizza Pal? I just want to let everyone know that I started an email list. Why? Because I recognize that time is more important than ever, especially after being a dad. And I realize that content is abundant. And sometimes we just can't get to listening to a podcast. Or sometimes we don't want to listen to a podcast because it's not going to be relevant to our lives. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to educate and help add value to your life. And if you're listening to a podcast where you don't get any value or you don't get enough value out of, I really don't want you to waste your time on that. And so what I want to do is send out a weekly newsletter highlighting some of the key topics that we discussed in the podcast. That way you don't have to go to your podcast player, look through the description, or even listen for like 10 to 15 minutes only to figure out that the episode isn't for you. I hope to save you a bunch of time. So please do sign up for this email list. There's going to be a link in the show notes. Again, I'm going to send out an email letting you know what's going down. That way you can prepare yourself to listen to this podcast when you're making dough, when you're driving the car, when you're going for a workout, or you can say, this one's not for me. Let's go check out the episode for next week. I truly appreciate it. And I hope I can save you some time 
So thank you in advance for signing up for that email newsletter. Are you the type of listener that wants more content? Do you have suggestions for the type of content that's being made? Maybe you're the type of person who wants to support me as a creator. Well, I'm here to announce that I have started a Patreon. A number of you have been asking about this ever since I started podcasting in 2020. And I'm finally committing to the process of creating a Patreon. I wanna create some episodes that are raw, unedited, give my thoughts, I also want to provide bonus content from the episodes that didn't make the final cut. And finally, I want to just have open communication with the listeners. And I promise that if you reach out to me via the Patreon, I'll get back to you as soon as possible because I know you're going the extra mile to support me and therefore I'll go the extra mile to support you. So whether you're interested in more content from me or you just want to support the team over at What's Good Dough, check out the link to my Patreon in the show notes. I'd greatly appreciate it if you signed up. Thank you so, so much for supporting me. Well, there you have it. My conversation with Juan G. Perez at Juan G. Pizza. If you're not already following him, please make sure to check the link in the show notes and get in on the pizza content action. He is posting some amazing stuff, whether it's from five years ago out of his 800 photos or his current day stuff. You will be amazed at how he's just working that oven shaping his pizzas in his own style and and really just getting his whole team involved. If you love that show, please, please, please reach out to him and let him know what's good though. Before we end the show, I just want to remind people that if you haven't done so already, remember, subscribe to the show, follow the show, and share it with a friend. Also, please leave a rating. Five stars would be great on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere that you listen to your shows. Finally, follow us on YouTube and have a great freaking day. I love you. Till next time. Peace.